Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno. Welcome back to my Game Engine series. So last time we, took, we talked about cameras and specifically the theory behind cameras and we planned all of that out. If you guys haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. I gave you guys the homework of trying to work this out yourself, so hopefully you've done that. If you haven't yet, stop this video, go back and watch that one. Really have a go because this series is all about trying to teach you guys how to make game engines and how they work. And you're not gonna learn anything unless you actually do this stuff for yourself rather than just copying down what I do. So definitely do that if you haven't already. I wanna thank all the patrons that made this series possible. Patreon.com forward slash the channel is how you can support this series. Thank you so much to everyone who is supporting because that's what makes this stuff possible. And I'm so grateful to all of you. If you want videos early or you want access to super advanced source code that I've already written for this engine, um, check out the link in the description, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the churno. Okay, cameras. We've done all the theory, we know how they work. Let's just dive in and um, go into the C++ code and actually implement them. Okay, so what we did two episodes ago is we created this renderer and we had renderer begin scene, we had renderer submit, we had renderer end scene, we had all of this stuff. And last episode we learned about all of the theory behind that. So we don't need to cover that again today. We've done that in the last video, which is awesome because it means that we know exactly what to do, right? So we need some kind of way. First of all, let's just deal with the camera side of things before we begin submitting that data to the renderer. Um, we need a camera, right? So what is a camera? It's a view matrix and it's a projection matrix. Let's create some kind of class to store all of that. So inside renderer, I'm going to add a new item it's gonna be a header file. I'm gonna call it orthographic camera.h. I just wanna be really explicit about what kind of camera this is because we're also gonna have, of course, a perspective camera um, or some kind of camera that we can move um, in the future as well. So for now though, this is just gonna be an orthographic camera. Um, now to make things easier, we are gonna kind of uh, wrap the creation of this. Um, so what you'll see um, me do in a minute, and I just wanna include GLM here. Um, what we're actually going to do is, um, so orthographic camera, I mean, I didn't have to call the file orthographic camera because I could have just put all the cameras in one file. Um, so that may have been a mistake, um, but it's okay. We'll keep this explicit for now. Um, when we create an orthographic camera and we get this constructor, I don't want to take in like a projection matrix. We could, right? This could just be such a gen generic camera class that it just like works directly on a projection matrix and a view matrix. But I wanna make this a bit more fun, a bit more flexible. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of take in a float that's going to be like our left, essentially, a float that's gonna be our right, a float that's gonna be bottom, and a float that's gonna be top. So this is exactly what a um, what an actual orthographic matrix wants, right? It wants basically the bounds. Now an orthographic matrix is a matrix that instead of having like a frostum, it has like essentially just like a rectangular prism that is like, it's a picture like a cube, but it can be like a rectangle. And we're defining kind of the left, right, bottom, top, and there's also near and far bounds. But typically for orthographic rendering, like negative one for near and one for far is fine. That's the defaults we're gonna use. So we're not gonna actually take them in here. Um, if you wanted to, you could make this a bit more powerful by providing that API, but I'm not gonna bother because we don't really have a use case for it. And this stuff is also somewhat temporary probably and will be rewritten. Um, okay, so what do we actually need in terms of data? Well, we know what we need in terms of data. We need a mat for that's our projection matrix. And we need a mat for that's our view matrix. Okay, now we actually need to keep track of where the camera is, like the position of the camera and all of that as well. Now we don't wanna do this inside the view matrix because what we'll do is like once per frame essentially when we calculate where our camera is, we want to recalculate this view matrix. Um, this has to be the inverse of like the actual transformation matrix of the camera. Right, that's what the view matrix is. So we could have another matrix that's actually the transformation matrix, but of course you could just invert the inverted matrix to get your original matrix back. So that's something we can do as well. Um, but essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep track of the position by just using M position, right? And in terms of the rotation, I mean, we could like keep track of the rotation either, either by using like a VEC3 of Euler angles or by using like a quaternion or something like that. Um, but you don't really rotate orthographic cameras. You can rotate them like, you know, along like the Z axis. Um, but if you wanna do a rotation like that, you can really just, you know, keep rotation as a float and that's gonna be fine. And I'll initialize that to zero. 
Okay, so there we have um, all the data that we could possibly need really for orthographic camera. Um, let's go ahead and provide some functions for everything we want. So we want um, some kind of way to retrieve these matrices, right? So we can have a, um, and I don't know, like if you wanted to, you could also cache um, the view projection matrix, right? So view projection matrix, um, because uh, you might not want, you might, you'd still need them separated, but you might also be requesting this like very often and you don't want to do the, the multiplication every time or cache it yourself. So you could do that. Again, this is up to you because if you do that, keep in mind, you are using 64 more bytes of memory for this class. Um, I don't know. Usually it's not a problem though. So we're going to do that. Okay. So we have position, right? So let's go ahead and make a set position function that will actually let us set the position. So I'll take in a const GLM vec3, um, which is going to be position. And then I'm just going to set M position to position. So that lets us actually position the camera somewhere in the world, right? Um, we'll also do a set rotation, uh, which will just be a float rotation. So again, this is going to be Z rotation, rotation along the Z axis, um, because we don't really need any other rotation for an orthographic camera. Because again, this is basically a 2D camera. Picture it that way. You don't, don't really rotate things um, along the X or the Y axis for 2D. That's going to give you weird results um, that you probably don't want. Again, obviously, if this is, an, if this is an orthographic camera for like a 3D modeling application you're making, then you still want to have, you know, X, Y, and Z rotation. But in this particular scenario, I'm picturing this as more of just an orthographic camera that specifically um, is for like 2D, 2D rendering. That's why I'm doing it this way. Um, and in 2D, we only have one axis anyway. Um, like as in we only have like two dimensions, so therefore rotation along the Z axis is, is all we can do. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, I also want to have getters for this. So float get position, um, sorry, not float, const glm vec3 reference get position, const return and position, right? And then for rotation, I'm gonna do the same thing. So float get rotation, um, and oops, this will be rotation const can't type what I want to type today. Uh, return M rotation. Okay, wonderful. So that looks like a pretty solid API to me. Now let's go ahead and actually create this. Now, um, <laughs> when we do this stuff, see, this is the thing. When we do this stuff, right? Set, we've got set position. Obviously we don't have any ways of retrieving matrices by the way, but when we do set position, set rotation, we probably need to update the actual view matrix unless we have some kind of update function which does that for us. Um, so this again is up to you. Um, if we're dealing with a camera that's responding to mouse movements, you could implement an on update function or even hook this up to the event system. And upon then you'll be recalculating your matrices. But what I'm saying is at the moment, our matrices do not get recalculated. So what we need to do is create a function. Um, we could use on update again, but I won't for this example, um, which will be recalculate view matrix, right? And recalculate view matrix is basically going to be a function that we call whenever we set something. So when we set rotation, we want to recalculate the view matrix. When we set position, we want to recalculate the view matrix. And we want to do this, by the way, after we set the value, obviously. So recalculate view matrix goes here. I'm still keeping this kind of in line and in one line because um, it's not that big of a deal. But you know, if you want to drop that into a CPP file or anything like that, then that will be totally fine and appropriate. Okay, so this is what we've got. Um, we also need a way to retrieve these things. So very easy. Um, I'm just gonna make a const glm map for get projection matrix const, which will return projection matrix, right? Again, you could make setters for this. Um, at this point, you could really do whatever you want. You could just make them, you can make this a struct and have public fields instead. Um, there's no, I don't know, cameras are such a flexible, you know, API usually that um, you could call this VP matrix, view projection matrix. I like to be quite explicit, especially because this series is about teaching you guys how this stuff works. Um, so we'll do that. Okay, view projection matrix, view matrix, and projection matrix. Good, everything looks pretty good to me. Um, now we can just make this constructor that actually ended up being the only thing in this file. Um, let's include hz pch and uh, orthographic camera, namespace hazel. Go over here, we'll get rid of this namespace. Um, what this is gonna do is actually make the matrix, right? So projection matrix is going to be um, basically a GLM 
uh, orthographic, or ortho, I think it's called. Um, I forgot the actual, uh, I always forget where this actually is. So it looks like it's in GLM extension, like mat four or something. So I think it's GLM GTC matrix transform. Um, yep, okay, and then this takes left, right, and you can see this actually has a function that just takes bottom top. I think they've also got one that takes near far. Um, I'm not sure if we don't, um, let's just see, if we go to this and we look at what it does, um, let's take a, try and take a look, because this is quite hard to read, of what it actually did for near and far. So um, a little bit hard to see here, um, but ortho, for um, the place where it's supposed to use like near and far, which for example is here, you can see it just uses a default value of one. So you could probably roll with that, but I still am gonna provide um, negative one and one, just so that we actually know what those values are and we're not relying kind of on GLM. Okay, um, that's like, funnily enough, that's pretty much it. Now we don't need to recalculate the view matrix here at all. Um, oh, we actually need that function. I'm not sure why Visual Assist didn't make it. Um, recalculate view matrix. So this is something that happens after we change the actual transform whether it be by setting the position or setting the rotation. So what we need to do is calculate the actual matrix first, and I'll show you guys the whole kind of code for this. Um, you could probably optimize it by not doing everything every time, um, but we're still gonna do that, um, just so that you guys can see how it works. So we have our transformation matrix. Now, what is this gonna be? So we're gonna take, um, it's gonna be position times rotation. So the first step is to take the position and actually work out a, tr a translation matrix from that. So that's just gonna be GL, uh, GLM translate and all this stuff is in that matrix transform header. GLM translate, um, we're gonna take a base matrix, which is gonna be the identity matrix like that. And then we're gonna translate it by a given vector. Now the vector is gonna be position, right? So that's how we kind of wind up with this. Then what we're gonna do is multiply it by uh, rotation. So GLM rotate, um, the mat four that we're gonna be rotating is just again an identity matrix. Um, and then the angle of which we're gonna rotate it is going to be rotation. And then along which axis we're gonna rotate it is gonna be GLM VEC3001. Okay, so the Z axis. Um, now, a few ways of writing this. I mean, what you could actually do, technically speaking, is because this takes in a base matrix, you could actually break this up into two lines so that you do, um, you know, here transform equals, um, rotate and then which matrix you kind of rotate the transform matrix like this and you do all that i don't like doing it that way um because it it's just it's just a bit confusing to read i don't really like it um so what i usually end up doing is something like this right so and i've broken it up into two lines so that you guys can see it more clearly um but basically we just we always use mat4 here right and we just do translate and position that does the translation matrix and then we multiplied our cells manually by the rotation matrix. Um, I'll have to look into performance to see if it's actually better to just start with an actual matrix instead of identity when we create these matrices. But um, to me, this actually just makes more sense because we're basically just saying, and, and I would love it if GLM didn't take in this matrix in the first place, because then we could just do translate position and rotate, you know, rotation like that. And that would be beautiful. But the API does that, so that's just the way it is. Okay, cool. Um, and you are probably supposed to use it by actually putting in the previous matrix here. But again, this kind of makes more sense mathematically, I guess, because you're not um, starting from a other matrix and then not knowing about multiplication order or anything like that. So that's our transform matrix. That's beautiful, but we need to invert it, right? So when we actually set our view matrix, what we need to do is do GLM inverse transform. So we're taking that transform matrix and we're inverting it just like we talked about in that theory video um, in the last episode. Okay, and that's it. Now we obviously, we obviously also need to calculate our view projection matrix, um, which is going to be in this case GLM, oh, sorry, just um, M projection matrix times M view matrix. All right. Um, and that's our view projection matrix. Now I am, I did write it as view projection matrix, not projection view matrix. Um, so I kind of wrote it direct X style or row major style, even though it's like this. So that might be a bit confusing, but just remember GLM is column major because we're dealing with OpenGL and it's based on OpenGL. Um, so we need to do the multiplication this order, not this order. If you do it the other way around, it will not work correctly. Okay, so this is um, not what you want. Okay, cool. Let's just undo all that. Um, that should be pretty much it, right? So every time we change position or rotation, we recalculate this whole matrix. Cool, sounds good to me. 
Um, let's go ahead and try and use this. So inside application, we really should move all this stuff into sandbox app. I probably should do that. Um, maybe in like a midweek episode because I don't really want to spend an episode on that. Um, anyway, so we'll do include Hazel uh, renderer orthographic camera. Um, what I'll do is um, I'll pop over into the header file and I'm just going to make, and this doesn't have to be like, um, this, this doesn't have to be like a reference, like a shared pointer or like a unique pointer or anything. We can literally just um, make this kind of on the stack like that. Um, and then we'll have to, in the constructor, actually specify some uh, values for it. So we need the left and right, near and far, all of that stuff. So we can just do minus one, one. So we'll, we'll actually feed it the same values that are being used right now, which is when we don't provide any kind of matrix. Okay, so we have camera, um, which uh, provides all that stuff. Let's not even move it. We don't need to move it. Um, by the way, at the moment, just so you know, the view matrix, um, so when we, we actually missed one thing that we should have done, um, and that is because if we request this view projection matrix, right now it's gonna give us identity, like nothing. Oh, actually, I don't even know. I think by default, it creates identity, um, but it might not, to be honest. I don't know if it better create identity by default. Um, but anyway, if it doesn't, we can just set it just to be sure. But anyway, we need to set it anyway, because, um, we need to set this view projection matrix right now to be, um, projection times view, right? So this basically, we need to run this code in the constructor as well so that we have a valid, valid view projection matrix. And just to make sure, um, I w I can actually set view matrix to one like that, which will create an identity matrix. Okay. So that's done. Great. Beautiful. So back in application. Um, I have a valid view projection matrix. I need to get it and actually put it into my shader. So how do I do that? Well, I use something called a uniform and a uniform is basically just a per draw call kind of value that I can actually set to my shader, um, from the CPU side. So from the C plus plus side in this case. So the way that it's accessed is we'll create one in the vertex shader. Um, it's just going to be written as uniform and then the type, which is map four. And then I like to use a U underscore prefix just to let us know that it's a uniform. Um, this is going to be the view projection matrix. Okay. Just view projection is fine. And then what we're going to do is in GL position, we're going to multiply this view projection by this position. Okay. So again, in direct text, you'd kind of do it the other way around and you'd probably, you wouldn't use, you'd probably use mal as well in HLSL. Um, but anyway, in GLSL, it's just view projection times, um, this, which in this case is our actual vertex position. Um, and obviously this is just for, uh, this shader. So we'll copy that into the next shader as well. Um, because we have a blue shader as well. So, uh, view projection, and then view projection times and that's it. And you can use uniforms anywhere. You can just write uniform, you know, uniform vec for color, for example, right? And then you can take in an actual color into this and use that color, say, instead of this color to give um, that, that uh, blue, the blue rectangle, any kind of color you want. Okay, anyway, we've got that now. How do we actually set this though, right? So what we need is some way to set that uniform. Now we don't have that API inside Shader yet. So let's go ahead and see how to set a four by four matrix. So what we do is um, we'll just make a function. I'm gonna call this upload uh, uniform mat four, right? This makes sense. Um, we will include GLM because we need to know what it is. Um, and then what we want to do is take in a const GLM, uh, map four, which is going to be our matrix. Um, I'll just create an implementation from that. Now, what we need to, what the first thing we need to do is make sure that our program's actually bound. Now I'm going to assume that you do that manually, because if we want to upload a whole bunch of matrices or a whole bunch of uniforms, we don't want to keep binding it every time. So I'm going to actually mandate that you actually bind the pro bind this program before you actually upload this matrix. Um, so this is just going to do the upload part, but basically we need to make sure that we like, you know, GL use program first, and then we're going to do GL, um, uniform ma matrix for F V. Now F means it's float. V means it's an array of floats because obviously a matrix is 16 floats. So the first, um, the first piece of information here we have is a location. So where on earth is this matrix? Um, so to do that, we need to retrieve the actual location. Now we've called a variable something we've called it V we've called it, um, U view projection, right? So what we actually want to do is retrieve that. 
And we can do that by calling gl get uniform location. Okay. What we do with this is we pass in the program, which is mrenderer ID, and then we pass in an actual name. So in this case, it would be u, you know, projection matrix. Obviously, we don't want to hard code that. So we'll just take in name, um, and name will be a const um, std string name, um, and then we'll take in the matrix as well. So this name, we'll copy that, paste it into here. Um, this is going to be name. This gives us some kind of like result. Essentially, it's going to give us an int, I believe. And the int will just determine. And if I go back to here, I can see it gives us an int. Yep. This int will determine, um, whether or not this is, uh, whether or not it's valid. So if it gives us negative one, it actually means that it doesn't exist. Um, and we just need to do name dot C string. Okay, so that's our location. Let's assume that worked for now. Um, we, we're probably next episode, maybe, we might take a look at uniforms in just a, a, a better way because this video is about um, implementing the camera. Um, we take an account. So this is not how many floats we're giving, this is how many matrices we're giving. We're giving one matrix, so we write one. Um, transpose is whether or not we should transpose the matrix. So if you were in row major ordering because you were using like a row major math library or like a direct X maths or something like that, like that, you just need to transpose your matrix. You would just type in GL true and it would transpose it for you. Um, we're using column major maths already, column major matrices. So we just type in GL false. Um, and then finally, this is a pointer to the value. Um, numerous ways to retrieve this from GLM, but usually I use GLM uh, value pointer and then matrix, and that gives us back um, that gives us back an actual pointer. Now, in order to use value pointer, you need to include it, um, and I have no idea where it is. Uh, GLM GTC maybe value pointer, or where is it? GTX value pointer. I don't know where this thing is, man. Okay, so it's actually I googled it. It's GLM type pointer. So thanks for that. Anyway, um, there we go. Okay. And then we do that. That's how we upload a uniform mount four into our shader. So now that we know that what we can do is, and we're not going to upload it here. We're going to actually upload it before we draw. Okay. What we want to do is, um, just to test this out at least is once we bind our shader, we want to upload, um, upload a uniform mat four, and this is going to be our camera get view projection matrix. Okay. And then obviously we need to give it a name. Uh, and what do we call our uniform U underscore view projection matrix. So we just put that in as a string like that. And that's how we actually set that variable in our shader. And we're going to do the same thing for, uh, this. So shader and then upload uniform map four. done. Now, if we run this, we should see hopefully the exact same result as before. And note that we're binding the shader first here. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Um, we actually uh, got a ton of build errors. So that's fantastic. Camera is unknown. Um, that's because I think we included camera into our CPP file, whereas we should have done that in here. So we'll just leave that here, try and build again. And hopefully it worked this time. All right, and build was successful. Here's us running it. And you can see we get the same result. Now that's great. Let's try and change this matrix and see um, if we actually achieved anything. So back in uh, our CPP file, I'm gonna try and make this a lot bigger, right? So it's like negative one right now, sure. What I'm gonna do is actually make it bigger. And if I make it bigger, if I just open Photoshop here and just draw with the mouse, um, this was our current screen, right? This was negative one, this was positive one. What I'm gonna do is make it bigger. Right? So what that's going to do, if I set it to negative two is suddenly it's going to be like this big, right? What that actually means in practice is that my vertex positions, which if we go back here for a second, my vertex positions used to be like negative 0.5 to 0.5 for the uh, triangle. Um, if my vertex positions were that, right? It means that this was zero, zero. So this was like negative 0.5. The triangle looked like this, right? And that's awful but you kind of get the point. The triangle looked like that or whatever. I think it actually started like that. If I make this negative two, suddenly that negative 0.5 is actually going to be like more here. So the triangle is going to be like that. It's going to be, everything's going to be smaller because I've made the left and right bounds and the top and bottom bounds of my screen a lot bigger. So if I go over here into um, this and modify it so that it's negative two to two and uh, negative two to two on both X and Y, everything should be smaller because what I've done is just made the bounds bigger. So the camera can kind of see more in this scenario. And you can see, there we go. Everything's a lot smaller. Now, one thing that I've hated since we've kind of started this 
is the actual aspect ratio of this, right? So obviously if we look in our actual code here, you can see that we're defining a square, right? This is a square. It's negative 0.75 to positive 0.75 in every axis. It's a square, but it's rendering as a rectangle. Why? Because the matrix, of course, our projection is from negative two to two or negative one to one in both of these. However, this window is not square. If we make the window square like that, I mean, we haven't set that up properly, but you can see it kind of gets, it, it kind of looks right in the preview before we actually re-render this. Um, so what we want to do is actually set this actual like uh, projection matrix to be the same aspect ratio of our actual scene, right? Now it doesn't have to be like, you know, in pixels or anything like that. It just has to be the right aspect ratio. Now, clearly um, we've made a window, I think that's 1280 by 720. That's a uh, 169 aspect ratio. So what I actually could do is just do something like negative 1.6 to positive 1.6 on the X axis, and then negative 0.9 to positive 0.9 on the Y axis. And now this obviously is gonna be 169, right? So let's go ahead and try with this and we should get an actual square square. And you can see that this square is now square. Now this triangle looks very tall now and not as nice, but we're actually rendering a square, which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna leave it um, at that. Now, API wise, we're not perfect, right? Because what we're having to do, like we, we've got the result we want 100%, but you know, begin scenes not taking a camera, like we kind of decided we would um, in the previous episode. So what I'm gonna do um, is hop over here into the renderer and actually make this take in a camera. Now, how we take in a camera, again, I did say that we can take in like a reference to a camera or a, we can copy the camera or we can do whatever. Um, I definitely don't wanna copy the whole camera class because if we look at the whole camera class, it's like four matrices, a like a three component vector and a float. So it's like four matrices plus a four component vector, essentially. That's too much. Like I don't wanna copy all that data. If anything, we just need to copy projection matrix. Um, so what I could do is in begin scene, I could just take in essentially a reference to an orthographic camera. It doesn't really matter where it comes from, but I'm taking in a reference to it. So it could be from a pointer, from a shared pointer, anywhere, because what I kind of wanna do in this case is maybe just copy that matrix, right? Um, but you'll see that we'll actually kind of do more than that. Um, but anyway, uh, that's kind of what I want to do for orthographic camera. I could just actually also have a shared pointer and then get a reference to that in the scene. But as I mentioned, that's not really the design we want to go for, at least not right now. So orthographic camera is gonna be inside a begin scene. Okay, so what that means is that, and I'll have to include this, so include orthographic uh, camera. What that means is that when we begin scene now, we have to actually submit a camera, which is exactly what we want. Um, the next step is we need to also bind the appropriate shader and upload this uniform mat for. What that means is that when we submit something for rendering now, we need to be aware of what shader it should be rendered with, right? So what that means is that this function now needs to take in information about the material of this geometry, right? So basically, in this case, all we have is a shader, right? Um, and a material is just a shader on a set of uniforms, and that will be something stored in a mesh. So in, in other words, in the future, this will just take in basically a const reference, like a, a const shared pointer, right, to an actual mesh. I said reference as in like a ref counted object, but basically um, it's just gonna take in like a reference to a mesh, and that's it. But right now, um, we don't have materials obviously with meshes or anything like that. Um, so we just take in a vertex array and then we're actually gonna take in a shader as well. So um, const std shared pointer shader, okay? Um, and that's gonna be the shader with which we render. So I'll copy this um, into here and I don't know if you wanna take in the shader first or the shader second or whatever you wanna do. Um, it's kind of up to you. We'll include shader over here. This is temporary anyway, so I'm not putting too much thought into it. But basically what we wanna do here um, is actually bind the shader. Doesn't matter, in OpenGL, doesn't matter if you do it first or second. Um, and then we wanna actually upload that camera. But the camera's here, and this whole class is static, so we have no way of storing it. So how is that going to work? Well, again, traditionally, you need some kind of backing data that the renderer has. We don't have anything like that at the moment. Um, you could if you wanted to, so, um, it's kind of up to you how you do this, but basically what I'm gonna do is make a, uh, I'm gonna make a struct called scene data, right? And then this is going to have, in this case, um, a projection matrix. So GLM mat4 um, view projection 
matrix, okay? Um, and I'm gonna have a static scene data pointer. Now, this is totally up to you how you wanna do this. Um, this is like a, I don't know, we're gonna revise this design in the future because we suddenly run into a renderer that's not 100% static, but needs to persist with state. Um, so it's up to you how you end up doing that. For now, we're just gonna do it this way. Um, scene data is going to be uh, basically something that's gonna live for the entire duration um, of our actual, uh, of our actual um, renderer, right? And we're only gonna have one of them. So it's totally fine to just heap allocate that there and leave it as B. Um, so what happens here is when we begin a scene, what I wanna do is access scene data and set the view projection matrix to be camera, get view projection matrix, okay? And that's kind of the scene data. And then finally over here, after we bind this, we want to upload that uniform mat four. It's gonna be going into U of view projection. Um, and it's going to be M scene data view projection matrix, okay? Let me just double check. Yeah, it is view projection. I thought it might've been view projection matrix. Okay, that's done. All right, okay, that's as simple as it is. Um, to just set this up, we need to take in a shader and we need to take in a vertex array. Um, what I might do is actually I've decided that, and I wanted to do that, I don't know why I didn't, but I actually do want to have the shader first because we can't really, like a vertex array is great, we're submitting that, but we need to know um, the shader is kind of more important, I think, than the actual geometry data in a way for this because um, the shader kind of specifies how we're rendering and then what we're rendering. Um, so I just kind of like that way or order of things more. Okay, so in here, we submit the shader first, so blue shader, and then we submit the actual vertex array. And then over here again, we submit the shader and then the vertex array. And then guess what? This disappears. This now does not need to be done. So we have a begin scene, we have two submissions, and we have an end scene, and that's it. And it's gonna to respond to our camera and everything's gonna be amazing. So let's just uh, run this code and see what we get. Okay, and as you can see, we get the same result as last time. Isn't that cool? Um, so that is basically it. You can see that really all we do is we just create a camera with a particular orthographic projection. Now we didn't do step position or anything. Let's do that for fun. So what I'll do is I'll set M camera. Uh, I'll set the position. Yeah, we should test that out for sure. Um, I'll set the position to be offset a bit. So we don't want to go too far, maybe 0.5 in both uh, X and Y, right? Because if we go too far, everything's going to be off the bounds. So let's just set our camera's position to 0.5 here and see what happens. Okay, and as you can see, we move the camera. Now, where do we move the camera? We move the, we move the camera 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So we move the camera right and up, and you can see that this has moved down, right down and left, which is the opposite. So obviously our inverting is working correctly. Um, and then finally, what I wanna do is actually set the rotation. So we'll say camera set rotation, right? Um, and it might be better to do that without setting the position actually, just so that it doesn't rotate somewhere else because if we rotate both, then it's gonna be a bit off the screen. Um, but we'll basically just rotate everything 45 degrees um, and see what that gives us. Okay, so that's given us nothing, which is quite strange. So we should probably diagnose that. Um, first of all, I very uh, stupidly, I think, didn't even consider um, the rotation in terms of where, whether it would be in radians or not. Obviously, I think it will be in radians. So we should actually cast this into radians. Um, and then we have our translation and our rotation. So that should actually all be correct. So let's go ahead and try that out again and see what we get. Okay, so yet again, nothing. That's always fun. Let's go ahead and try and debug this. One of the first things I'm gonna to do to debug it is actually try and set the rotation to a pretty small value, like 0.5. Um, I also wanna take a look at the actual camera API here to see that um, I'm actually setting everything correctly. So yes, rotation is being set to rotation and I am in fact recalculating the view matrix. So that's all correct. Um, yeah, that's that's quite strange. But if we set it to a low value, we should see. No, we actually see nothing. That is quite peculiar. Okay, so let's just start by diagnosing all the numbers. Whenever something like this happens, it's really important to actually dive in and see um, what the numbers that you're getting in your matrix are. And this can be hard for some people who aren't um, too experienced with matrices, but I should be fine. So recalculate view matrix is where everything happens. Let's see what our, so our rotation is 0.5. Our position is okay. <laughs> our position is uh, not set. So I guess GLM doesn't actually initialize um, things like at all, I think maybe. Um, I was under the impression that that would just get set to zero, 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 but it didn't. So that's a bit of an issue. 
Um, this float, of course, we did actually set to zero, so that's good, but position doesn't get set to zero, so that would be the issue. Um, so we need to make sure that we do that. So I'll come over here to position, just make sure that um, I set that to zero. I might be able to just do that, or well, if not, I'll just do that. Um, and now if I go back here, I'll again change this to be 45 instead to make it a bit better. Um, let's just launch this and now everything should just work, I think. Okay, and as you can see, everything is on a 45 degree angle. Now we should be able to move the camera slightly as well with no issue at all. Um, it's important to test the, the um, both like translation and rotation actually works. So we'll try and move it like maybe one or something. Um, one might be too much though, 0.5 again. We'll try and move it 0.5. Um, whoops, make sure that we give this as a three component vector um, and it should just work. Okay, so you can see that we've both rotated and translated our camera and everything seems to be working correctly. Of course, it's doing the, um, the, the rotation still is correct. It's not rotating around the new origin point. Um, it's doing it in the right order, which is really important. So there we go. We've got rotation, we've got translation, we've got cameras. Um, a bit of homework for you guys, if you want to do something yourselves, is actually try and make this position and rotation stuff, try and control the camera using like the WASD keys or the arrow keys or something like that. So you can hook on into events and then set positions or rotations based on that. So see if you can do that for homework. Um, that will be quite a little, uh, good little extension exercise. But to summarize, you can see how clean everything is. We're now beginning a scene with a camera and then we're submitting everything. Um, they get, uh, uh, the shader, the shader uses the view projection matrix to actually set um, the camera data, right? Obviously right now we're binding and setting shaders for everything. So if I render a whole bunch of these with the same um, shader, it's just gonna set it every time. So what we want, actually wanna do obviously is when we submit, we wanna store the shader and the vertex array, any other geometry in like a list and then kind of, you know, batch them together essentially. But for now you can see that this kind of simple way of doing things um, works. Wonderfully. So there we go. That's pretty much all there is to say about cameras. Um, next time I do want to actually maybe expand a little bit on how shader uniforms work, but it might not be um, really quite necessary. I don't, I don't think I've, I mean, I haven't covered uniforms at all in the game engine series, but um, they might not be necessary just yet. I think what another better thing for us to explore potentially might be this whole um, uh, model matrix thing. Um, so we'll see. I'll still make my decision uh, based on what I think is better, but that is cameras. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can help support the series by going over to patreon.com forward slash the churno if you haven't already. Um, huge thank you as always to everyone who helps support the series. You can get the next video a week early and you can also get access to the source code for Hazel, um, the Hazel development branch where I've done like a 3D scene with a PBR renderer and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. Animation is in there. Um, everything's really cool. Next time, as I said, um, maybe some graphics -y things, maybe the model matrix kind of stuff. Um, we'll see how this kind of ties in together because there's a, there's a lot of pathways where we could go down into um, to make this stuff happen, but you can see that, oh, and I really want to have like a midweek episode probably to just move this stuff away from the application class, obviously, and into our actual sandbox app. So I'll probably do that as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.